If you can't already tell, I have moved away from the generic cookie cutter review template that we used to rely so heavily on earlier in this channel's life. And the reasons are twofold. Firstly, we don't have the equipment nor the manpower to keep up with some of the channels that are publishing very in-depth, very just data-rich product reviews out there. I'm not gonna act like I can compete with that. So that was kind of the writing on the wall. The second reason is that reviews just usually don't do very well. <laughs> uh, Click-wise, viewership-wise, I mean, regardless of the product in question, my goal ultimately is to drive clicks, to drive views. That's how I get paid. That's how I make more money instead of less money. And if nobody wants to watch reviews, it would be just the, the dumbest thing ever from a business standpoint to continue making them. I did, however, make an exception for this product. This will be the most expensive pre-built gaming PC I've ever reviewed from Origin PCs, and it comes in at just over $4,000 as spec. I'm ready to jump into the meat and potatoes of this one because boy oh boy, is it expensive and I've got a feeling it's gonna cost a lot more to uh, buy this already pre-assembled than it will to actually build it yourself. That tends to be the case with more expensive systems. We shall see. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key in your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Let's kick things off for this $4,000 plus dollar pre-built aspect with a rundown of just that. The specifications, I've got my cheat sheet here, and boy oh boy, is it a long list. Starting first, we've got a Corsair IQ 5000X, this meaning it has a glass front panel, not the uh, airy kind of perforated panel you'll find in the D variants, although you do get side intakes, which will help a ton significantly in our testing, and you get a top-mounted 360 millimeter AIO, which exhausts out the top. The motherboard is an MSI MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi, which takes DDR5 memory. The CPU is a Core i9 13900KS, which turbo boosts all the way up to 6 gigahertz, which is pretty nuts. The GPU is an NVIDIA 24 gig RTX 4090 Founders Edition. The memory config is a 64 gig stack of Dominator Platinum DDR5 modules at 5600 megahertz each. The OS drive is a Corsair 2 terabyte MP600 Pro XT, which is a Gen 4 drive, although I should note that you don't get any other storage in this. For a little over four grand, I'd expect a bit more than two terabytes. That's just me. It might be perfectly fine for you, but uh, I'd like a bit more flexibility in the storage department if you ask me. The power supply is an RM1000X series. Uh, it's a gold power supply, fully modular. I don't see anything really wrong with that. Uh, the AIO, as mentioned earlier, is a 360 millimeter H150i Elite Capellix XT, which does have the built-in screen, although this is not notably the latest IQ Link ecosystem, which involves very minimal wiring and things. So it seems Origin's a bit behind on the latest and greatest from Corsair, which is interesting because Corsair owns Origin now. This is a bit of a disconnect, but I think you'll still be fine with this hardware. The fans all around are Corsair QLs, looks like 120s, I don't see any 140s in here, and there's not a stone left unturned, my friends. Every single fan mount is occupied, which I, I suppose in this price range, that's a good thing. And to tie it all in, it's gonna come with Windows 11 Home already installed and activated on that boot drive we mentioned earlier, the MP600 Pro XT. So uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot in this, but I can tell you right away, just by reading these specs that, um, we're gonna have some gaps in this build budget. I think you could build it a lot cheaper than we'll end up paying from Origin. One thing I noticed right out of the gate is the clearance between these AIO tubes and this top fan in the RTX 4090 FE. These were awfully close, actually practically touching by the time the system arrived here, and I'll show you why. This is how the system arrives in that crate I mentioned earlier. So it's got this inflatable sealed air pack, which we actually use ourselves for uh, shipping PCs. It's a good thing, it keeps the graphics card stable in there but it also pushes this tubing down into the top fan, which could create a bit of noise, potentially damage the fan if you turn the system on and don't realize this. So if you're buying this, make sure that, uh, yeah, you make sure these tubes are out of the way. A bit of an oversight on Origin's part, just know it going forward. Now a hallmark of Origin PCs as of late seems to be cable management, and this is the third system where I've just been genuinely jaw-droppingly impressed 
by the amount of just meticulous effort that went into getting this just right. This looks like it was done by Greek gods and probably took more than an hour alone. We've got three different hubs for fans, RGB, and this is by itself already a huge challenge. You can see how many zip ties they've used, probably over 50 if I had to guess. Um, the only reason this cable is not straight, horizontal, or vertical is because it's simply not long enough. But the effort here is just second to none. You've, you've really got some of the best cable management in the pre-built business in Origin PCs right now. This one's me just being picky, but I am a bit perturbed by the fact that there are two empty dim slots in this board. I mean, you're spending north of four grand and it just feels a bit incomplete. I know why they did it though. It's so that you could upgrade to say 128 gigs of DDR5 by adding two additional sticks. It's not bad, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of a wash. I do have to say cable management on this side of things is extremely clean, very minimal cable exposure. You can tell they really took their time, which is what you want in a pre-built system. And we've got a unified 12 volt high power cable instead of that ugly splitter setup where you have like three different eight pins all tethered to the same connector. It looks really ugly that way. So at least they went this route. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can customize this AIO screen to pretty much whatever you want. I like this motherboard's rear IO selection, ample USB ports, but we're limited in terms of ethernet to a single two and a half gig port. I wanna do something at this point that I haven't really done before, and that's jump very early on into the pricing of this unit, because I think it's too big an elephant in this room to ignore for much longer. Folks are expecting to pay a bit of a premium. Of course, Origin has to eat, right? So there's gonna be a bit of a markup there. There's obvious labor that goes into it, curating components ahead of time, the risk of sitting on inventory to make these to order as quickly as they do. All of that should be considered. The problem is, as you start pricing up these rigs, you get into the three, $4,000 territory, the premiums on these pre-builds get that much larger. And you might chalk that up to, well, there's going to be richer people that buy these. They can afford it. But the value is what starts to really diminish. And you'd be surprised. There's a lot of wealthy individuals out there who value value more than we do. You could even argue that's one of the reasons why they have more money. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to price this entire rig out as spec'd, and I'll get back to you in a few seconds with the results. Well, um... Uh... It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So the exact price of this system, according to Origin, is $4,299. That is our reference point, and you can see I have picked almost verbatim this exact spec sheet from their website on PC Part Picker. The only exception, really, that I can tell is the case. I chose the white and gray version instead of the black one because, for whatever reason, the white one was like 40 bucks cheaper. Uh, but that gives us a total still of around 3,850 bucks which is only about, what, 450-ish down from what you'd pay to have Origin build it for you. I think the real kickers here that drove up the price higher than I was expecting were the Core i9 itself. That's a $730 CPU that hasn't really come down since, and because it's the SKU, obviously it carries that price premium, uh, so that drove things up a bit higher than I was expecting. Of course, the RTX 4090 is a $1,600 card. There's no way around that. And then the fans, the IQ QL 120s. I forgot that there were an extra like six in here that you're not going to get otherwise, and those are a high $110 each. That's a lot for fans, premium ones at that, but still, that's ultimately what helped contribute to this $3,850 price tag. So if, for whatever reason, you wanted to build your own system identical to this one that Origin offers, you'd be saving, again, just under $500, and you'd be paying a lot for fans and, frankly, other things you could probably do without. For example, this Core i9, though many would argue necessary, doesn't have to rely necessarily on DDR5. You could get a DDR4Z790 motherboard and pair that with much cheaper 64 gig DIMMs. You could go for 128 here at the same price as 64 when you compare DDR4 to DDR5 at this point. DDR4 is so cheap now, it would be a sin in my book not at least to consider it. The 4090 is pretty much capped out. You're not going to get much better than this, and you'll be paying a heck of a lot more for workstation or server-grade graphics cards. You could obviously choose a cheaper case, though I'm totally fine with the 5000X in this scenario. And, of course, you could skip out on all the extra fans. If you wanted to go the new Corsair Link route, you're probably going to add another three or $400 to this budget. Those components are definitely not cheap. And you'd certainly have room for a much more expensive power supply if you wanted to go the route of a 1,200-watt unit or even a 1500 watt, that would still keep you under the $4,300 ask if you built this yourself. So the evidence isn't totally damning for Origin in the price department, which is not 
to be fair, what I expected. And speaking of fair, I suppose it wasn't fair of me to assume that this rig was going to be just an egregious price relative to what you could build it for because of its price alone. That's not fair to the rig. It's definitely not fair to Origin. So I definitely need to check myself going forward when it comes to uh, my initial assumptions and how those might skew my perceptions and things I say out of the gate in videos like these. Um, could you pick better parts? Arguably. I mean, you could spend your money a bit better in a $4,000 budget. But uh, if you wanted, for whatever reason, this exact configuration, again, we're only looking at between a 10 and 15%-ish markup. Anything over 20 and you're going to get a serious grilling from me. But uh, look, I don't expect it to be a break-even for Origin. I certainly don't expect it to be cheaper than it would cost you a ride to build. And I think on that note, the only time it's ever actually been cheaper to buy a pre-build would have been around the time graphics cards were extremely expensive and very difficult to obtain, somewhere around 2020, 2021. And uh, you could buy pre-builds with graphics cards in them, rip the graphics card out, build your own system, sell the pre-built, and actually make money. It was a really bizarre set of circumstances. I suppose then, on that bombshell, that uh, we should move on to the performance chapter of this video. And I've got a feeling this is where it's gonna shine. 3 Mark Time Spy is a 1440p DX12 synthetic. I like to use this because we can compare our results to others who have run the exact same test. And we scored better than 99% of all submitted results. We're basically in the top one percentile here with this combination of hardware. Again, not much of a surprise. You can see we are just so far ahead of the game and it's mainly because of our graphics card. The RTX 4090 with a graphics score of 36,117 is just light years above anything else I've personally ever tested. Just for the lulls, I also decided to throw Firestrike Ultra at it, also from 3D Mark, and with a score of 24,446, we are still way higher than pretty much anything else tested in this software suite, better than 99% of all submitted results. It's practically effortless for this, but uh, my oh my, this is, this is impressive, I've gotta say. Now it's time for some real games, starting with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This is a beefy game to run, especially in 4K, and with the highest graphical preset enabled. But you can see we're still pushing north of 100 FPS in most scenes. Yes, we are largely graphics card bound, but you can't really get much better than a 4090. So if we're GPU bound, so be it. I'll take these frame rates with this preset. Hopping into a Formula One car then with F123. This is 4K pretty much maxed out. Again, you guys know the drill. We're north of 100 FPS. We do have DLSS though to take advantage of here in this title. You obviously won't have that in every title, but we might as well enable it. That's my perspective on this. You don't really see much of an image quality hit at all with DLS3. I'm not even sure if F123 supports DLS3. I assume it does since it's a new title, but even so, this still looks incredible in 4K. 4K and we're pushing north of 120 FPS in a lot of instances. So very happy with this. You can see our CPU is just chilling around 12, 15, 20% utilization. It's a bit funny. I mean, our 4090 is carrying most of the load here in the higher resolution, but it's still churning out frame rates like an absolute boss. It's almost comical at this point. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an admittedly NVIDIA touted title, though I expected 4K and the highest graphical preset with DLSS set to balanced to bring things a bit lower than what we're seeing here. Well north of 120 FPS, looking more like 165. So for those who have 4K 165 Hertz monitors, just feel free to max everything out. We don't have ray tracing enabled. That's the only thing that we could have dumped onto this card. You'd probably get around 100 to 120 FPS with that enabled, uh, but still a very fair performance overall. Lastly then, the revamped Battlefront 2. This was also fairly comical because our frame rate was pretty much pegged at 200 FPS, which is the frame cap for this game, I believe for almost the duration of the recording session here. This is actually me playing, which is why I'm absolute trash at it, but uh, you can see it's so smooth, just ultra buttery smooth in the highest graphical preset. Piece of cake for this game. In fact, we're not even fully graphics card limited, so we've pretty much just tapped out this uh, game's potential. I mean, the 4090 is actually too powerful of a card for a game like this in the standard 4K resolution. Just incredible to see. A few other things worth noting about Origin pre-builds in particular. And I wanna make that distinction. This is a pre-built, not a custom order rig. I didn't handpick anything. They didn't handpick anything for me. If you buy the Neuron 5000X pre-built system, it's gonna look exactly like this, more or less, given, uh, assuming there aren't any major parts changes down the line. This is subject to a one to three day shipping clause, which means that within three days it should be shipped. That's pretty decent turnaround time. I'd expect that though, since you can pretty much just build these in bulk, because again, you're not changing much. You also get a free ground shipping option with this, which I didn't, of course, receive. I just got mine in a crate for some reason. Um, I don't think many folks are gonna opt for the crate option if that even is a shipping option, because 
it just doesn't make much sense unless you need it extremely fast and you cannot risk the system being defective. Just go for the ground free shipping option. If something goes wrong, call Origin. I imagine they'll make it right. Speaking of the warranty, there is an implied warranty with this. They do have 24 seven lifetime support for these systems. I don't know how they're gonna do that. I obviously can't test that because I just got sent the thing like, like a few days ago, but it is there, it's on their site. Hold them to it. If something goes wrong, let me know in the comment section. If you're shopping for your next power supply, look no further than Intermax's Revolution DFX units. With their high static pressure, six pole motor fans, and patented self-cleaning technology, enjoy peace of mind from a PSU built with safety and durability at the forefront. And of course, each unit's built for the latest generation of graphics cards with up to two 12-volt high power lines each, with optional 8 plus 8 to 12 plus 4 for additional expansion. The Revolution DFX is ATX 3.0 and PCIe 5.0 ready, super compact, fully modular, and ready to rumble. Find them in wattages up to 1600 by clicking the link below. You know, I was about to film an outro. These fans are extremely loud at their default settings. They need to be tweaked in the BIOS. They weren't when the system arrived. Another thing I noticed while we're on the subject of uh, stuff you might want to tweak, the BIOS on this board was definitely a bit buggy. There were times when I couldn't even see the buttons on the left and right side of the screen, usually for things like motherboard and overclocking, etc. I ended up having to flash the latest stable BIOS for this MPG board from MSI to get things to work properly. Not the end of the world, but I'd expect at least a stable BIOS in the board of a $4,300 pre-built. Ah, that is so much quieter. So consider tweaking your fan curves if necessary. Consider updating your BIOS or at least checking the current revision that you're on before you know, doing intensive things. Uh, and maybe consider downloading IQ and syncing up all these fans because you saw a second ago, some of them were synced up to red, some to white. And I think it's just a result of having multiple RGB and fan hubs behind here. It's a bit of a cluster. It's somehow it works, but it's a lot of wiring and it can be a bit jarring. For $4,300 then, the Neuron is no slouch, but that should be a surprise to literally no one because this thing costs a metric crap ton of money. It's so much money. And I feel like at this point, I owe it to my audience to show you what you could build to get roughly 95-ish percent of the performance of this rig. If you were just a bit smarter about your parts choices and you were willing to maximize value instead of just the organic ecosystem that is Corsair. I know some will say this is apples to oranges. I'm not using the same case. I'm not using the same cooler. Heck, I'm not even using RGB capable fans, but that's my point. If you're willing to compromise a bit and prioritize value instead of aesthetics and a unified ecosystem, System, you can save so much freaking money. Heck, I got this to around $3,000. That's a $1,300 difference from this thing. And remember, my system still has a 13900K in it, not an SQ, but still a K. It still has an RTX 4090, and I made it a point to not only double the storage in my system, but also increase the wattage of the power supply from 1,000 watts to 1,200, still a great efficiency rating, and still an A tier list unit. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It's not so much that I dislike Origin's current price with the current specs, I just dislike the fact that the current specs led to the price we're at. With that, if the Neuron 5000X still suits your fancy, I will have it linked below in the video description for you to check out. I'll also have just a generic splash page for some other pre-builds. You can even customize rigs on Origin's website. So give all that a look if you're interested. I think you'll find better values than this one on the site. And that tends to be the case the further down the price range you get. Uh, with that, if you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you have not already, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.